Guys, how we doing? Welcome to the channel. Today we are comparing hoes. Stick around to find out the differences and the similarities too. We got the front hoe versus the back hoe. They both have pros and cons, so we're gonna compare all that today. So stick around. Hey, you can see my tractor is looking a little different today. We got the dual wheels off, have the wheel spacers on. I am proud to be sponsored by Bora. If you're looking to add some stability to your tractor, check out Bora, links down below. Hey, and if you like what you see here, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button right down below. And if you want more cool stuff for your tractor, read through the description underneath the video or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Okay, so this goes by a few different names. Yeah, this is my own creation. The poor man's backhoe, the front hoe bucket, stump bucket, stump wrecker. It doesn't matter. You get the idea. It mounts to your front end loader. It attaches just like your bucket would, whether you have a John Deere or if you have a skid steer quick attach, a couple levers. That's why I always recommend having a quick attach. You can put something like this on or a set of pallet forks, a grapple, a snow pusher. The list goes on. I know you guys want to hear about pricing first, so we're going to do that. Keep in mind, this is April 30th, 2021. Depending on when you're watching this in the future, the pricing could change and most likely will change. I'm going to give you two ends of the spectrum. If you want to pick this up locally for me here in Kalamazoo, Michigan, you can do that right now. Currently priced at $650 plus tax. If you want me to ship it to you within 1,000 miles, the entire eastern half of the U.S., and a little bit west as well, we can do that for 820 bucks. Okay, so I don't sell the backhoes, but I have a pretty good feel for the market. Typically, you are gonna pay somewhere in the range of 7,500, maybe eight grand for the backhoe, the subframe, the Power Beyond Hydraulics, and the installation. So we're gonna take round numbers, just say 800 bucks for the stump bucket, eight grand for this, that's 10 times the amount of money that this is gonna cost you versus that stump bucket up front. Okay, so let's talk about some strengths and some weaknesses of both the front hoe and the back hoe. In my mind, one of the biggest limitations on the front hoe bucket is gonna be digging depth. So you are limited by this distance right here, this measurement, about 18 inches or so, because once you have that rocked forward and down in the ground, you can't go any further than this whole plate. That's gonna be the maximum amount you can dig down. So whereas on the back hoe, you're gonna get a lot more depth, depending on the model that you have. It could be a six foot flat bottom depth, even up to an eight or nine foot flat bottom depth. So that's significantly more, there's no doubt about it. It's gonna depend on your application at hand. So another limitation of the front hoe bucket is gonna be similar to other front end loader attachments. So something like your regular bucket, it could be a set of pallet forks, maybe a snow pusher, a grapple, anything that from the operator seat, it's just kind of tough to see once you have the load that's way down in front. But like any of those other attachments, you do get used to that just with feeling it out over time. And after an hour or two of using this, you really get a good grasp of the angle and, and where exactly the the uh, digging edge is at, so it's not insurmountable, but it is a limitation to consider. Now on the backhoe, you actually have really good visibility. You're nice and up high and just not much in the way besides the boom here. So you can just see, especially if you're kind of working to one side or another. So it's not hard to imagine how you have a, a better visual advantage from up here in a high perch position on the backhoe. Next up, let's cover mobility, all right? So in my mind, the front hole bucket is gonna be a lot more mobile than the backhoe. Now, in order to get stability to use the backhoe, you need to be able to put down those stabilizer arms, put down the bucket on the front to have a nice stable working area. With the front hoe bucket, you wanna have plenty of ballast weight on the backside, but you can move all around while you're using it. In fact, you are moving around while you're using it, kind of driving down and digging down and maybe pushing forward and pulling up and you can kind of attack it from other angles really quickly. Or if you have a whole field full of stumps, there's no you know, disassembly, reassembly basically, or setup that's required you just move from point A to point B. So with the backhoe, you're just not as mobile. So it can be a lot more time consuming. You have to put down these stabilizer feet to get that lateral stability there. Same thing with a bucket on the front end, and then you're limited in that working area, which is the radius that your boom can extend to. And so whether you're working on a stump or if you're trenching, anything that you're doing with the backhoe, you're confined to that area. So if you wanna to try to attack something from the other side, you have to undo everything you did, position yourself from a different angle, reset up and then get back to work. Or if you're trenching, if you, after you go six or eight feet, you have to reset up again all along the way. So you can see where mobility is a strength of the front hoe bucket. So as far as using a front hoe bucket, Pretty much any of us that have a tractor with a front end loader have a quick attach bucket. And if you haven't purchased a tractor yet, I would encourage you, highly encourage you, not to get one without either a John Deere quick attach or a skid steer quick attach. That is gonna be the only type of connection that is required to use the front hole bucket. There's no other hydraulics or any other electrical connections. You just pop your regular bucket off and put this on and you're ready to get to work. Wow, look at that, Chris. 
As far as connections go for the backhoe, you have a few things going on. Number one, you have to have the hydraulics called Power Beyond Hydraulics. That's different from like a third function or a rear remote. I've done videos all over that, but you have to have Power Beyond Hydraulics, okay? But not only that, you have to have a subframe. Most at least OEM backhoes are going to have a subframe underneath there that you have to kind of rest everything that, that goes in and fits and attaches to. That means you're going to need to take off, for a lot of the smaller ones, the three-point arms. So you have to take that stuff off, then you can put this on, make some hydraulic connections, and away you go. If you want to switch back to a box blade or some other piece of equipment on a three-point hitch, you got to reverse that whole process. So it's going to be less efficient that way, and I get it. There's there's plenty of uses for backhoes, but I just want to point out. So if you're looking to do applications with a hoe bucket, whether it's a front or a back, you really want to take into consideration the efficiency of it for your projects. You know, so there's a laundry list of projects you can do with a hoe bucket, whether it's a front hoe or a backhoe. Everything from digging out stumps to trenching to planting new trees to maybe ripping out fence posts or scarifying hard packed ground. Maybe grabbing and carrying material like boulders or logs maybe with a thumb on a on a rear backhoe everybody's plans that they have for their backhoe or their front hoe are going to be different and that's going to lead you in the right the more appropriate direction budget is going to be a huge consideration in my mind though there is not much more efficient tool than a front hoe bucket if you're looking to do shallow work you know just maybe a foot trench or digging small holes for trees or bushes or just digging out some landscaping up around your house. The efficiency, the mobility, the convenience of just having this mounted right on the front of your tractor without having to mess with anything on the backside, it's just hard to beat for me. But there's no doubt about it, there's gonna be certain projects that a front hole bucket just isn't gonna handle. You're gonna need something with a lot of digging depth or maybe reach that a front hole bucket, you just can't get to that position. So you gotta weigh the pros and the cons of everything. Now, if you've watched my channel for a while, you may have seen an overrated items and attachments list on tractors from a while back. And the backhoe was really high on that list. That isn't because it's not a useful attachment, it's because of the relative price point for what you can do with it. Most folks that want a backhoe have maybe a couple projects for up front. You know, they're getting their tractor, they have it set up, they've got to clear some fields or maybe put some food plots or a garden or whatever the project is. But after those initial projects are done, for a lot of folks, that backhoe is going to come off. It's going to sit in the long grass somewhere, just fading, letting the hoses get all ruined and faded and, and just deteriorating and depreciating. So it makes it a lot harder to justify with the amount of money that's just sitting there not being used for a huge amount of time. Whereas something like a front hoe bucket is gonna be more practical and easier to justify. Now a third option to consider, if you're thinking that you have a need for a backhoe and you only have a couple of projects up front, you know, consider renting a mini excavator. Get it out there for a couple weekends, just plan ahead. You're gonna get a lot more work done with a mini excavator that's on tracks that you can just easily and quickly maneuver versus one of these three-point backhoes that you got to set everything down, do what you can within a limited space, and reset constantly. It's going to be a lot more efficient with a mini excavator, and guess what? You're going to have some money spent for that rental, no doubt, but you're going to be losing money over the years by tying up thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in a backhoe like this. Now, I want this to be objective, but I have to clarify that I have some skin in the game. You know, this is not the first time I've talked about a backhoe being overrated, you know, and that's one of the reasons that it pushed me to come out with my own stump bucket that's designed for smaller tractors. I just feel this is such an overwhelming expense for most folks that aren't going to realize the full value of it. So I want to take a quick minute here and tell you about these features that make this what I feel like is the best mini stump bucket that's on the market today. And so you're going to see a lot of other stump buckets that are huge. They're three foot long, three and a half foot long, and that is just too big for a smaller tractor, whether it's a subcompact or smaller compacts like a Kubota B series, a, a John Deere 2 series, maybe even the smaller 3 and L series as well. This is just a lot more practical and makes sense, lets you use the loader's power instead of potentially damaging your loader. We've incorporated some great features including this Sawzall type edge that's along so it can rip going forward and backwards. We went through three or four iterations and we're always going to try to improve if we can find other areas to do so. You're going to have a replaceable uh, digging edge here. We've actually gone from one steel to a stronger steel. Uh, the original steel we felt bent a little bit too easily. This is going to be an AR400 edge here. This is still meant to be 
the breaking point, that sacrificial point. So if you do get into a bind with this stump bucket on your loader, you're not gonna tweak your loader arms or the rest of the bucket. You'll just either bend these teeth or break off these bolts. So that's by design. And possibly most importantly, this is 100% made in the USA. US steel, US labor, right in Iowa. I have a small fabricator over there making them for me. So this is 100% made in America in every way. I'm really proud to say that. Well, there you have it, folks. Hopefully I answered a lot of questions that you guys have been asking over the last few months. I appreciate all the support and the interest. This gives you a little bit different look or a different take at it so you can help make a better, more informed decision. Some of you guys can really justify these purchases here of these backhoes, but if you can't, just know you have another option for the front hoe that could be a lot more affordable and get the projects done that you need to do. Again, if you like what you see here, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below and read to the description as well, right underneath the video or head over to goodworkstractors.com. Thanks again for stopping by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.